Thank you. What was your experience of that short performance? Maybe you were thinking, oh, I love flute music. Or perhaps, this is really pretty. What am I having for dinner tonight? <laughs> Maybe you thought, you know, I don't really like classical music. It's kind of boring. Or maybe you wondered, why didn't he give an introduction? What am I supposed to be listening for? After performing, listeners will often say, that was a beautiful concert, which is really wonderful to hear. And I'll thank them and ask, what did you find beautiful about it? Their eyes widen and they go silent. Then they say something like, oh, I don't know. I'm not a musician. It was nice, I just liked it. <sighs> Although well-intentioned, I've been so bothered by this because hearing that they don't have more to say other than like or dislike or that they're struggling to articulate their experience, it makes me feel like they're not really connecting with the music themselves or me. But I've also realized that I've struggled to define what I expect and hope for when asking a listener about their experience. So five years ago, I fell into a deep musical depression because I wasn't feeling connected with audiences. I was practicing three to four hours a day and excited to share my music. But after the concert, there was no one to connect with on a deeper level. And I began wondering, why am I putting all this energy into it if no one's going to respond? I thought music was a universal language. Is it just entertainment? Am I even a good enough musician? I felt lost and isolated, and I was considering quitting my career. I needed help, so I called Lisa, my first flute teacher. She had nurtured my passion for music in high school. I felt like a huge disappointment telling her that I'm losing my fire for performing, not connecting with people anymore. And she listened so thoughtfully and kindly and told me something she had said when I was younger. Jim, you need to spend some time soul searching. Ask yourself, what do you really love about music and what do you want to share with it? I couldn't remember, so I set out to explore my connection with music in hopes of re-engaging with audiences. Now, my soul searching began here, reflecting on the beginning of my musical journey at age 12. My grandma, the only other musician in my family, had a profound influence on my musical life. She would often ask with this light in her eyes, what story are you sharing? You see, she saw performance as this opportunity to share something you love about the music, your specific connection. And as a kid, it really inspired me to develop characters and stories and places that I imagined in the music. I gave my first interactive recital four years ago to middle school students, about a year into my soul searching, and I asked them to write about stories and characters that they heard in the music. So while I'm playing, pencils were furiously going in the audience, and there's a lot of little chatter. And I'm thinking, this is great. What are they coming up with? Wait a sec. These are middle school students. <laughs> oh, why did I think this was a good idea? Ugh. Well, after the concert, I talked with the students about their experiences, and they'd all connected in different ways. Some ideas were similar and simple, and others were complex and even unique. One of my favorites, I had played this really lighthearted, snappy piece of music, and a student said it reminded him of the movie Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> How does that even happen? I have no idea, but why not? Why not? It was his experience, and it was one of the most inspiring, fun, and creative concerts I'd played in a long, long time. And I was finally feeling connected with listeners. 
So I kept designing interactive concerts to enhance audiences' connection with music. I would ask questions and include art, writing, and movement activities. Sometimes I even went a little further. As a Greek tour guide in Pan's Harmonic Labyrinth, or as Devo James in Concerto for Frenemies, these were about engaging and being open to creating a meaningful experience while intentionally listening to classical music. Then I wondered, what about spontaneous musical connection? So to explore this, I put on comfy clothes, packed my flute and supplies, and I went to the subways of Chicago. I made this sign. I thought the smiley face was a nice touch. <laughs> and I played a piece by Bach over and over since trains come every five to eight minutes. It was an eye-opening experience. The wind from the trains was constantly blowing my stands over. I even lost some music that flew into the tracks. <laughs> Sometimes there'd be a crowd of people listening and people drawing, and other times, 30 minutes would go by and no one would look at me. One time, I invited a curious man to listen and add to the art, and he drew and then walked away. I later checked. He had drawn the Nazi symbol. I was stunned and horrified. All I was trying to do was encourage creativity and connection through music. And my heart was racing and I'm wondering, what do I do? Do I cover it up and pretend that it just never happened? Maybe I should just pack up and go home. It was so painful thinking that my music could have led to that. For the integrity of the experiment, I chose not to change it, and I actually kept playing with a sliver of hope that maybe someone would come by and cover it up. As I kept playing, people watched me with the most uncomfortable stares and I felt disconnected all over again. This went on for 20 minutes. Then a gentleman walked by and he smiled while I played and he frowned at the poster. He asked about the swastika. I told him what had happened and about the art project. And then I kept playing. <laughs> Though the colors were clashing, he turned the symbol into a sun. He said the music reminded him of sunshine. There were countless incredible and beautiful moments like this, and I met numerous Chicagoans and travelers. I was typically playing 90 minutes where one piece of art was created to one piece of music. And here are some of the creations. One of my favorite responses was when a five or six year old girl, she ran up and she said, oh, I know what you make me think of. You sound like a fairy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As a flute player, we were most often con compared to sounding like birds, so being called a fairy was a fantastic surprise. <laughs> you see, playing in the subways wasn't about getting people to like classical music. It was about giving them an opportunity to be present and expressive with their listening experience. Yes, I'm changing the presentation of classical music, but what I'm really doing is reimagining the listener's role. I see the listener as an active participant and collaborator in the concert. I get to be creative as a performer and give you music to create something with. This was the connection I'd been searching for all along.
Now, in four years of interactive work, there are two things I've discovered. Everyone can connect with classical music. You don't have to have formal training, though it may add to your enjoyment. And two, your listening experience is enough. Listening is something we all know how to do. And it's not about listening correctly or having a life-changing musical revelation. It's about being present to your authentic experience and finding your own meaning in the music. I define creative listening as awakening your imagination and being open to your innate creativity and exploratory experiences that connect you with music. It takes the creative performance and the imaginative listening and fuses them together into a shared creative experience where we become collaborators. Now, I'm really excited to share a musical story with you today. In all of our intellectual stimulation and note-taking at this conference, we're going to pause now and share in a collaborative listening experience. And your role is simple. Listen. Really listen. Listen with intention. In our busy lives, we're struggling to be present with the music and ourselves. So the creativity and connection that we crave as human beings isn't being fulfilled. So today, I invite you to be mindful and engage in this experience. Be open to your first reaction. Does the music remind you of something in your past? Or does it take you somewhere new in your imagination? And be open to where your creativity takes you. Join the music's journey. Ask yourself questions about characters, emotions, stories, colors, dancing, whatever it is that inspires you. Now, on either side of me, we have some empty canvases and some markers. And while listening, ask yourself, what does the music make me think of? Then during this three-minute performance, I invite you to go up and draw, write, or color whatever comes to you. And multiple people can be drawing at once, so don't be shy. Afterwards, share your experience with one another. Connect on a deeper level and strengthen this community through music. It's time we reimagine our connection to music as listeners. Because when we do, we're present to creativity, expression, and connection with each other and ourselves. Happy creating, and thanks for listening.
Thank you. Thank you.